So we're going into the second half with him down at least one, possibly two, uh, Sorai. Uh, one gets back up. So with one Sorai missing, my Tomb Guardian got back up, luckily two, so that's all even. So, we do have a slight advantage now because he's at least missing one Sora source. Unfortunately, I still have a lack of block on my Tomb Guardians, or a lack of skills at all. And it's still going to be rough. Luckily, I still have a Wizard, and I still have a Bribe. So, I think the plan will be here at the beginning of the half to try to isolate uh, some Saurus, a Saurus, and just foul him. Or the Croxagor, for that matter. Which actually looks like he's giving me a pretty good opportunity to do. I am going to have to move some players back. He's good, definitely going to be my ball carrier from now on. And I would like my throw rod to be back here just in case he needs some help. And then... I'm going to need one more guy over here to assist with that. Um, I think that'll be good. And I get, or he gets an extra reroll. So all three of his guys up on the line have block. But that is a okay. Apparently. Because I'm just going to knock everybody down. Um, those guys are going to foul. That's only one die block. Damn. I have to move another guy up there, which I don't think I want to do that yet. That guy can't really get there. Um, I don't really want to make a one die block either. I can't really leave this the middle of this open, although I can rotate a skeleton over here when I'm done. So it's actually fine. I don't want to leave him up there, so I'm going to re-roll that. Which sucks, because I don't have a re-roll. That. That's good. And pick up failed. That's fine. I got a pretty solid line. I got rid of yet another Saurus. So he is down to three. And hopefully I'll continue to get opportunities to make these fouls and keep on taking him out. Because it's working incredibly well. I'm three for three on fouls. Which is great. He actually has four left, my bad. 
Like if I get rid of this guard one, holy crap, that'd be awesome. Which if he like moves him up into here so he can block my blitz raw, it might actually happen. Because I'll have the guard on this tomb guardian as well as this one blocking him. Depends on what the Croxagore does. It'd be nice to get rid of the Croxagore too. But if I take him down to like two or even three of his big players, then that's going to be awesome. It's going to go to that side with him though. Oh, and we get our first injury, which is a niggling injury, and I didn't catch whether or not Squirty Samoan did regenerate, though, so we're fine. Unfortunately, his Tomb Guardian, Flo in France, is about to take a hit. Um, but it'll be fine. Oh, he just gets a push. So he is blocked up by these three, though, but I will hopefully. That's annoying. I will hopefully be able to foul the crap out of another source, pick up the ball and get caged up. That is my plan, at least. Depends on where he puts his Croxador, though. That worries me. I find it kind of odd he moved all of his skinks to this side because if I do pick up the ball then I'm just going to run over here as far as I can and then cage up. I think actually picking up the ball might be a priority here. It's not like he has sidestep or anything. So I don't have to worry about that. He doesn't have anything actually. And the Crocs Gore is going to go to that side of the pitch as well. This is a really strange play. I don't know what he's got up his sleeve. I mean, yeah, that guy's going to dodge. But I'm just going to put him there, and then I'm going to pick up the ball with him. And then I'm going to run up to here. And I'm going to make a cage so I don't know if I'm worried about this side being open at the moment because I don't think he can really get there. This guy's screwed, but whatever. I could even wizard right in here and do some damage. I could fireball like f three skinks and a Croxagor right here or two skinks, a Croxagor, and two Sorai. I don't know if it would make much of a difference. But if I got some injuries out of it, it'd be awesome. The wrestle guy right there. And then we are going to foul this Saurus, which failed. Our first failure, but we had a whole lot less assists. And then ran the turn, and that's tempting. I'll hold off though. I don't know if I'm going to get a better opportunity than that, but.
All right. Yeah, I find it really strange that he moved his whole team to like one side of the board and left. I mean, it's completely open over here. Uh, he gets that though. And he gets a stunned on top of it, but that's going to be pretty easy to clear out. You can't really get another guy in there unless he dodges a skink in. Everybody's going to surround my thrower for some reason. I'll probably just if I block this Saurus with one of these two and follow up then I have oh he's going to go with the fouling as well now fortunately for me I have a bribe which is why I've been fouling and he's trying to bring it back but he's losing a player in the process so I think I have to block with this dude so I make sure I push him over to here. And then I can follow up and I can block with the Croxagore. Or block the Croxagore. Now that this guy's free. Oh, and I got a injury there. Just a minus agility, so not a bad, bad thing for him. But uh excellent for me. I'll get rid of this guy. Get him out of my way. Things are starting to uh, fall into place here. I still don't feel confident that I'm going to even have a slightest chance of winning. But just being able to tie the game up, I'm fine with. I do have to worry myself about this Saurus who also has break tackles. So I can't just like break up my cage. But I don't really feel pressure to push forward at this point. I probably should have blitzed my stove with this guy because I don't really have anybody else to hit with him. And I can move the ball up a little bit. They go to right here, except he's laying on the ground, but that's a pretty sufficient side. I mean, even with him laying on the ground, I suppose someone could sneak up into here, but who's going to do that? I mean, is a skink going to run up in here and blitz the skeleton? The Croxagore can't make it there. This guy is tied up. He can't make it down there. Yeah, I'm fine with that. And the bribe failed. I rolled a one on my bribe. This is still fine. Um, I still got pretty good control over the ball. I 
think I still have more players than he does. Let's see, he's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yes, yeah, so it's only one more player, but a bunch of his are skinks. Like half of his players are terrible skinks. Who was that that was ejected? Leakin Latvian Lizard. So now with no bribes, the fouling is definitely done. Um, I shouldn't have much trouble clearing this out. Mustang, well, should I blitz with him? Let's see, that's one assist. I need a second assist. Should I actually get by moving him into here? Then, well, he'd have to go here. This guy can come up into here and puts him, so that's good. And then we will be able to move our Tomb Guardians around. Let's see, I might end up stepping him a step back, so that'll where that guy will go. I think I may have messed this up. Yeah, because I'm using him as a corner of the cage. That's fine, I'll just put him over here somewhere. It's not going to be the prettiest of cages. But it's a cage. And eventually I'll hopefully be able to wheel around and push up the field. Is all looking pretty good. Imagine how much of a different game this would be if I had Chili Willy available with these skinks. I could just, that tackle mighty blow, I could stomp all over them. I'm still just going to slow play it. I'm definitely not trying to win this one at this point. This is solely a, I just want to draw out the game. Tomb Guardian gets KO'd. Yellow Yemen. Damn. That's going to make things a little more difficult.
So now the plan will be... to blitz this guy out of the way and move the cage forward. No, uh, that's a going for it. There's a stun skink. I actually feel like I should do this with the guy farther back. That's, uh, yeah, that's perfect. I'll leave myself a little bit exposed here if this fails. I'm not too worried about that skink blocking. One, two, three, four, five. That just leaves this corner exposed. Actually, I wonder. Leaves that corner very exposed. He'll be able to get into here if he wanted to. But. I'm not too worried about it. Unless I wanted to use the wizard on that guy, but I don't. So it looks like a draw could be in our future. a little bit better than what it originally started out as. I feel good about this. I mean, a win would always be nice at the opening of the season, but I'll take what I can get. And I always have that wizard, too, still. Which is probably what's going to make the difference in the end. I just gotta wait and see what he does so we can start to formulate our plan for the next turn. Looks like he moved his uh, Croxagor up here, uh, Gordon Gecko, into a position to maybe make a blitz with Chanit the Saurus on this skeleton and open up this top of this cage. Uh, which would be slightly annoying because he could definitely then mark the gar, uh, this Romanian relief and move in uh, with some players to make my life a little bit more difficult. Um, luckily on this turn the Swiss Piss is going to have an opportunity to finally move up the pitch and join the rest of the team. He's doing exactly what I thought he was going to do. So now I have to clear off that guy. Which might actually... Well, the Crocs is here, so I gotta worry about him. He could even move a skink into here now if he wanted to. And he also has this block here, so things are about to get a little dicey. As he's marking out my players uh, with the hopes of taking the ball out. Luckily, uh, it makes a little bit of difference there. He may be able to stop me from scoring. Now this is where the, the wizard may come into play. Because if I actually wizard this guy off of him, and then I can push him out to here. 
And he won't be very well protected. But I think... Let's break tackle guys all the way over here. He can't outrun these skinks, but I think I can block them off fairly well. So I think this is what's going to have to happen. We're going to get rid of him. We're going to stand him up. We are going to run this guy as far out here as we can safely. Then one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six. We can get a blitz rod over there to help cover him. We're gonna run this throw rod up here just to make sure there's no funny business with this. Uh, this Saurus can reach him. We're gonna blitz with our blitz rod. And we are going to get up to right here to offer some protection. That skink can get to him at the moment, but it, and so can that one probably. We're just going to knock him down and take care of that issue. And KO him. And then we will do the same thing with this guy. We don't get the knockdown though. But that, oh, I should have moved him somewhere else. That's fine. I'm a little, I'm still a little concerned. So I think he can still. get up to me with several players but I think that was my best option but I think this Croxagore if he blocks him yeah I mean he can get on to me but one two yeah. he's not going to be able to blitz me and then I just have to get the Crocs score off of my guy. And then I am free to score. Just getting the Crocs score off might be easier said than done. I don't know if I can get another assist over there. I mean, I can with him. It's going to take two going for it, so... And he's probably going to now mark him with him. So it's going to be... A... Ne uh, that's a negative one. This is a problem. He's going to block him off from getting there. I need another player up there. And I don't really have anybody that can get there. We just throw a rock hand with a dodge. I could just try to dodge him out. Which has a better chance of working than the throw rod dodging out. And then I can mark the Croxagore. The Skink will still be able to get to me. But he can be dealt with. Actually, I could even blitz the skink with the blitz raw and then come back. It 
It's going to come down to this, I guess. I can't think of anything better to do. The two die block is a terrible idea. He is going to be able to get to the ball if I fail this. But I, oh, he had pretty anti tail too. Now, of course, if this block fails, then I'm fucked. The Croxagore is not going to make it. The Skink can get over there, which is a problem. As well as this one. He has to make two going for it. But he still has all of his rerolls. I'm just have to let it go with that and hope for the best. Oh, I guess he can do that too, but that happens. And he gets badly hurt in the process. Now, what's the thing question here is what's more important? Do I make some punches with some Tomb Guardians? I, mean, I definitely want to hit him. I can't really afford to miss something though. Yeah, I'm just gonna have to run it in at that point. So there we go, the one to one tie with uh Poland Pit is that Poland Pit Stop? Yeah, Poland Pit Stop. Making the touchdown. And our one tomb guardian gets up, but it's the last turn of the game, and all we have to worry about is him not making a one-turn touchdown, which is not impossible with skinks. But I just have to make it as difficult as humanly possible. So what we are going to do is we got to put the guard guy there, and then we just got to put three on the line, and then tie up all of this. Just make it so that he can't, uh... Come in at angles. And block me to make the one-turn touchdown. Which doesn't even look like he's going for it.
Yeah, he doesn't have his skanks anywhere on the line. So, I believe this is going to end one to one then. Unless he's got some crazy plan I don't see. But that's definitely not going to do it, so. This is going to be the end of the game. Just waiting for this last turn to go by. Any minute now, and the whistle should be blown. All right, there we have it. Euro Nations' first match of season seven is in the books, and it ends up being a tie game. One to one. Let's take a look at our MVPs for the match. The Lizards of Wall Street, the Skink Iguana Paulson picks up the man of the match. And the most valuable player for your nation is the Swiss Piss. So thank you for watching. And we'll see you next week on your Nation Blood Bowl.